In the last video we got all the wall panels and windows into the van. This last panel that we fitted next to the side door was scribe fitted to the shape of the opening. And we mounted some blocks to the inside of that scribed edge, about 10mm in from the edge, which we can use to mount a thin infill panel to, to give a more finished look. So you'll see here we now have the wooden blocks to fit to at the top, there's a section in the middle where we can fix directly to the metal, and then a small area at the bottom where we have another block. Here I'm just gluing in another wedge in there, as the more places we can fix to, the better. We can then start making a cardboard template of the shape. So we're just cutting bits out and taping pieces together with masking tape. And we were left with this curved shape that we can draw around onto some thin 3mm plywood and we can cut out the shape at the bandsaw. We applied some adhesive and then add a few screws to pull it in tight to the blocks behind. And in some areas we could secure it directly to the metal. This worked pretty well except for one area where there was quite a sharp curve which caused the plywood to break. So for that area I mixed up some epoxy with a little sawdust mixed in. A two part car body style filler would be better for this application but we didn't have any so we're just using what we had. And we used masking tape to smooth it over and hold it in yeah. place until it cures. And while I was waiting for that I could use a flush trim bit in the router to trim back the overhanging plywood panel to the shape of that infill panel. And that leaves a nice flush finished edge. Once the epoxy has cured I peel off the tape and there were a few air bubbles but we got those later with a second coat of filler. And even though this might look like a bit of a bodge, by the time this is primed and painted it'll be impossible to spot. This video is kindly sponsored by ITS for all the tools you need and with next day delivery seven days a week. ITS refused to be beaten on price by either Screwfix or Toolstation. I've shopped with them in the past and been very happy with their competitive prices and good service and I'm not alone as they have over 16,000 five star Trustpilot reviews. If you use the code RAGONBONE at checkout and spend over £50 excluding VAT, you'll get a free goodie bundle worth £30. Link in the description box below if you'd like to check out their website. Unfortunately we lost some footage but here's what we made for the bulkhead, as in the panel that separates the back of the van from the cabin. We made this using 12mm plywood and what you see here is made up of three pieces, the left leg, the right leg and the top. And we'll need to join all three panels together. There's also a small return here which fits around some of the plastic trim on the van and we'll need to do the same on the other side later too. And here I'm showing the join between the legs and the top and you'll see that because all these panels have the tongue and groove effect grooves cut into them we can use one of those grooves to disguise where the panels meet together. On the top panel we cut out what will be a cupboard door which is going to open like this and the door was simply cut out with the track saw giving us a 1.6mm gap all the way around which is the curve of the blade and we just finished the cuts in the corners with the Japanese pull saw. Here I'm marking up where to add some dominoes. There was only space for one to join the right hand leg but the left hand leg was a little wider so I could fit two in there. And I'm using 8mm dominoes and sticking them in place with some polyurethane glue mainly just for the fast set time as we wanted to get the bulkhead fitted on the same day. Clamping this shape up was always going to be a challenge but using some sandpaper underneath some hand screw clamps positioned either side of the join and then using a couple of F clamps to squeeze them together from both the top and the bottom worked okay. This glue foams up and after about half an hour it's dry enough that I can just chisel it away. With it all assembled we can then fit hinges for the door. We added a couple of blocks to the inside which we can just glue and pin in place and that gave us something to fix the hinges to. And we folded up some paper to wedge in around the door to give us consistent gaps all the way around. <laughs> These are inset style sprung hinges we got from Amazon, I'll link to them in the description box. We can then screw the hinges in place first to the blocks and then to the back of the door panel. The hinges worked great although sometimes the door would stick slightly so we had to put a small chamfer on the inside top edge of the door just to give it some clearance. As always on this project a few refinements were needed to get a good fit.
and most of this bulkhead panel was secured directly into the metal ribs inside the van. And we also secured it to the wooden shelf that sits above the cabin. Here I'm just templating a little return to fill this space around the plastic trim. And that just got screwed in place. Next we can start cladding the doors and these also need to be templated so we just stuck lots of cardboard together, carefully cut out the shape as best we could with scissors and then we can draw around that template onto some more of that 5mm plywood and cut it out with a jigsaw. To be honest our experiences with templating were not that good, we found that no matter how careful we were making the template and cutting it out there were always one or two problems. After refining the shape with the belt sander, we got them held in place temporarily with a few screws. And here you can see that there's more of a reveal on the panel on the left hand side compared with the right. Fortunately we were able to resolve that by repositioning the panel on the left slightly but yeah in general we found it quite time consuming, difficult and not with the best results. The client wanted tongue and groove lines on the door panels too but getting them straight was going to be a challenge especially since using a spirit level in the traditional way is pretty useless when you're inside a van that's parked on an uneven surface. The solution that we came up with was to get a reference from the floor of the van using the spirit level and as you can see the bubble is basically sitting right in the middle of the line on the left here. We can then hold the spirit level up to the door panels until the bubble reads in the same position and then make some marks and we checked that those marks aligned correctly to the grooves that we'd already cut onto the wall panels either side and everything appeared to be lining up pretty nicely. So we could then measure down from those marks on each side of the panels and make the cuts with the track saw. The next challenge was going to be making a cutout for the door handle. So here I'm carefully measuring from specific reference points in the van and drawing up a diagram. I can then refit the panel in the same screw holes and mark up from the same reference points using those dimensions. We can then mark up the shape of the door handle and by pure coincidence it happened to be almost perfectly centered between two grooves. We cut out the shape with the jigsaw, making sure to cut the aperture a little bit smaller as we knew it would be easier to remove material than add it. And when we offered up the door panel to check it was ok we found a slight problem. Oops. We needed to remove some material on the left and bottom which you can see in this footage we've already marked up with a marker pen but that's fine, no big deal. But what was a problem was that we'd removed too much material on the right where you can see a gap. I really didn't want to waste this piece of plywood and do all of the work again to make a replacement panel so I decided to do a patch repair using the piece we'd cut out. Here we're marking up the shape of the piece that we want to add and I cut it out on the bandsaw. We added some packing tape to the workbench just to stop the adhesive sticking to it and then mixed up some epoxy. We applied it to both the inside edge of the ply and to the piece that we wanted to add and then we could tape it in position pulling the tape tight to where it needs to be. We added some weight on top and left it to cure. After 20 minutes or so we could peel off the tape and have a look and it came out great. It was fixed nice and secure so although it's common in woodworking to say it's easy to take a little off but you can't add a little back on, I think this proves that sometimes you can. After a bit of sanding and scraping we refitted the panel and it looked good, it'll look even better once it's primed and painted. The next job was to cut out the windows and the client wanted square window boxes to match the other windows. So first I cut out a square piece of cardboard just to help figure out how big we could make the windows to let in as much light as possible. We took some measurements to the template from the edge of the door panel on the right and we could then install the panel again and mark up those dimensions. I marked up the shape with my framing square. Having the grooves in these panels was actually really helpful because we could use them as a reference point to square up the windows to them. I then cut out the shape creeping up to my lines with the oscillating tool. And from this point on making the windows was the same process as we did in the previous video so I'm not going to cover that in detail but there'll be a link to that video in the description box below if you would like to check it out. 
When I fitted the windows, I needed to remove a bit of material from the top and sides of the window box to get it to fit, so I did that with the jigsaw. And then used the belt sander just to clean up the edges. And then it fitted great. Rinse and repeat for the door panel on the right and that's the back doors all done. So at this point in the project we spent about 10 or 11 days working on the van and that was just the wall panelling, the windows, the bulkhead and cladding the rear doors and we still have the large side door to do. In the next episode we'll be working on the ceiling and doing some boxing in and then beyond that we'll probably start building bunk beds, cabinets, that kind of stuff which we're really excited about at this point because the templating and scribing work that we've been doing to date is starting to get a bit repetitive. I'm not sure if that comes across in the video or not but it's just a lot of offer it up, mark it, cut it, offer it up again, mark it, cut it again, over and over again. So we're excited to move on. Please subscribe to the channel for more weekly woodworking videos if you'd like to help support the channel and get exclusive content, early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. You can find links to YouTube channel membership and my Patreon page in the description box below, or you can make a one-off donation via PayPal. Thank you for watching.